Spring Spin Flat. Today I learned how to crawl. Day seven. Let's go. Welcome to arithmetic. We're going to think through some of our facts this morning. If you're a girl, stand and give me the answers. Four. Four. Good, Morgan. Four. Four. Yes, Cadence. Thirteen. Thirteen. Three. Thirteen. Good. Thirteen. Thirteen. Eight. Yes, Eight. Cadence. One. One. Two. Two is right. Eighteen. Eighteen, Eighteen is right. Fourteen. Good. Fourteen. You may be seated. Gentlemen, continue. Seventeen. Good speed. Good, Asa. Good, Arthur. 12 is right, Jackson. 18. 17. 18. Not 8. Jimmy, Jimmy, what was it? 10 is right. Students watching, excellent. 10. 11. Good, Jackson. Good, Arthur. You may be seated. Stepping for your role, let's have Carly, Aiden, Tyra, Morgan, and Lexi. First seat up. And students watching, you're a part of row two, so help them out. Four, two, four. Row two, step next seat. 18. 18. Row four, step next seat. You are almost there, Josh. 17. Row four, step next seat. 18. 18. Row five, step next seat. 10. 10. Row one, step next seat. Six, but first answer, so let's redo. Thirteen. Row one, step next seat. Eighteen. Eighteen. Go again. Eleven. Eleven. Eleven is right, Asa. Your row may step. Four. Four. Eighteen. Row one, step. And row one is in first place. Row one, take a break. We're going to go for second place. Eight. Row five, step next seat. Seven. Row four, step next seat. 10, 9, 11, 11. Was that your first answer, Madison? Thank you for your honesty. Let's redo that one. 11, 1, 1, row 3, step next seat. 1, 1, 1's high, go again. 18, row 4, or row 3, step next seat. 3, row 5, and it looks like row 5 is in second place. So row one and row five, give yourself a pat on the back. Nicely done. Now we're going to switch over to some multiplication facts. Let's see how well you can remember zero multiplication facts and one multiplication facts. So let's have Emily and Jimmy and Adriana, Dev and Caden. You're stepping for your row. And students watching, you're helping out row two. So first seat back up. Let's see if we can beat row one and five this time. Zero. Row two, step next seat. Six. Six. High, rows one and two may step. Three. High, go again. Five. Five. Row three, step next seat. Four. Four. Row two, step next seat. Seven. Seven. Oh, row five, Asa, you are fast. Next seat. Three. Three. Row one, step next seat. All right, Aiden, go for your row. 12. Row two step and row two and one have tied. Give yourself a pat on the back. Students watching, excellent job with those facts this morning. Now in just a moment, we're going to do our speed drill. It's going to be less than seven and it's going to be two minutes. So you'll need your speed drill, your pencil, and your colored pencil. Prepare for your speed drill. Well done, Morgan. Nice job, Emily. Looking sharp, row three. Nice work, row two. Now, leave it on the front side where you have your score boxes. When I say go, you'll turn it over. You'll work less than seven. And then once the two minutes is done, you'll put your pencil away, and we're going to check it together. So speed drill positions. You can just set your pencil in the ready position. And once I say go, you'll begin.
If you finish before I say stop, you may use your colored pencil on the front to begin coloring some of the patterns on the front. Stop, pencil away, adjust your colored pencil. You're going to circle every answer that you got incorrect, and then we'll count them and find the number total number missed. So check that first row along with me while I read. 10, 7, 11, 15. Give me a big smile if you have them correct. Excellent, I see many smiles. The next row, 6, 14, 9, 14. Ooh, lots of smiles, well done. Next row. Five, three, three, and three. Good. And the last row, zero, zero, seven, nine. Now flip your sigil to the front, and where it says less than seven or seven, put the number missed. Minus zero, minus one, minus two. So count the number you missed. Put a minus sign in front of it. And if you miss zero, one, or two, wave at me. Oh, I see lots of people waving. Well done. Now you may put your hands down, put your speed drill on top of your binder, and then you may put your colored pencil on the side of your desk. Take out a, a scrap sheet of paper and a pencil. Now I need some helpers to come work um, clock problems with me. So if I call you to the chalkboard, you're going to be setting your clock, and then at your seat, you're going to be writing the time. So I want Emily and Carly to clock and, and Jackson. Jackson as well. You're going to set the clock, and then to the side of them, Cadence, I want you to write the time at number one. So you can use the spot right underneath number one to write their time. You are setting your clock to 318, 318. And students watching and at your seat, you'll write the time, 318. Cadence, you're doing what they are doing. You'll write the time. What does 318 look like? Ooh, I like how correct this hour is and the minute hand is. Well done, Emily. You may set yours down and you may return to your seat. Cadence has what you should have, 3 colon 1 8. Well done, Jackson, as well. One thing we're going to do is move our next minute just a little bit lower. And you got it, Carly, nicely done. You're to your seat. So let's have Presley, you come right. And Jacob, Gage, and Madison, you come pick up a clock. The next time we're going to do is 11.09. 11.09. Good, Madison right here. Oh, I, Ooh, like, I the like the hour. hour. Check, Check your minutes. minutes. It, looks it looks like it's 11, 10, or 11, 11. Presley has neatly written it. Gage, I like how precise your minute is. Well done. Oh, Ooh, yes. yes. Every, Every time, time you turn, it slides so just a little bit. There, there you go. go. Yes, yes you've, you've got, got it. Go ahead and turn and show your friends. Well done. Good work. I'm going to put it on the chalkboard. And let's have Aiden, you're going to come right. Jimmy, you may pick up a clock. Adriana, you may pick up a clock, and Yuna, you may pick up a clock. Now, this one is going to be a little bit more challenging, so you're going to have to think, what do we call a quarter after six? A quarter after six, and Aiden, what time would that be? Think about what a quarter after six would be. I have some fast thinkers. Students watching, what time is a quarter after six? 
and let's see what our workers up at the front have. You're thinking a quarter, but we're thinking a quarter after six. Aiden has, our, has the hour six, but let's think of the minutes. Not quite. Let's see what Jimmy's come up with. You have a quarter until six. Now, let's fix our clocks and place it at six. And let's go a quarter after six. Jimmy, show us your clock. What does that say? Six fifteen. Now show all your friends. Yes. Now, Aiden, go ahead and write six fifteen. Do you see how that went a quarter of the way past six? So it's a quarter mm -hmm. after six. Clock. Set your, your clock, clock down. down. And then Aiden, go ahead and finish writing that for us so we can see that final time. Well done, Aiden. You've got it. Tyra, come pick up a clock. Amaya, come pick up a clock. Arthur, come pick up a clock. And Kathleen, you may write for us. The next time that we are finding is a quarter until 10. A quarter <coughs> until 10. And students watching, what time did you get? Let's see what our workers here have. We found an o'clock. Now a quarter, a quarter until, until 10, 10 would be. All right, show them. Okay, you've almost got 10 o'clock. So if I move this a little bit, we would have 10 o'clock. But it's not quite 10 o'clock because it's only 10 o'clock. So, so we have to take the minute hand and move it until 10 o'clock, which would be before it. What time would that be? Go ahead, look, look at it. Look at it. Oh, I see, oh, I see some, smile some smiles for some workers. Not, not 10.45. It's until 10, so it's not quite 10. What would it be? What's the hour before 10? Yes, 9.45. So your clock, so your clock should say 9.45. Thank, Thank you, helpers. You may set those down, and you may return to your seat. Kathleen, go ahead and write that for us. And give me a big smile if that's the time you have written on your paper. Oh, I see lots of right answers. Well done. Now, Carson, come pick up a clock. Come Anna, pick come up pick a up a clock. Morgan, Morgan come, pick, come up pick up a clock. Up a clock. And yes. Deb, you come can right, come right for us. Your, your time is going to be half past four. four. Half, half past four. four. And students, students watching, watching what answer did you get? Now let's check our workers at the front. Carson, what did you get? Yes, yes that, is that is the correct, correct time, 4.30. 4 30. I, like I like how his hour is just past 4 and his minute hand is on the... Deb, go ahead, Deb, go ahead and write 4.30 for us. Thank you. You may set your clocks down. Good, Morgan, you found it. And Anna, nicely done, can slide to the back for us. And then Deb, let's see what you have. Well done. He has 4.30. Smile if you have that on your paper as well. Oh, I see lots of smiles. Good. Now, take out your ruler. Find the inches side. And we're going to draw some lines using the inches side to measure some lengths. Now, I need some workers. You're going to come and use this spot right here beside the numbers to do some lines for us. The first one, working at number one, Josh, you're going to write five inches. Do a five inch line, bring your ruler. You can use that in the chalk at the chalkboard at your seats. You're drawing that line. Use your ruler and your pencil, five inches. Start at the zero and then draw a line that would be five inches long. Good. Good. And Josh's line right here, let's check it. You can come step to the side, step to that side. Well done. And let's measure just to make sure we started at the zero and it's five inches. Well done, Josh. Our next one is going to be eight inches. Caden, come do eight inches on the chalkboard for us.
Good. All right. Let's see if his is eight inches. Draw a line where it should stop. Yep. Draw it a little bit larger. Good. Now step to this side for me. And you can see that Caden's line is eight inches. He drew the line where it should stop for us. So we can see that his line is drawn to eight inches. The next one is two inches. Lexi, come do two inches for me on the chalkboard right here in this space. Good, start at the zero. Very straight, nice job. Start at the zero, you can go this way. Good, yes. Start on the top. There you go, and you can go that way. <coughs> yes, so you can slide it this way, and then make sure it has the inches side, which is at the top and then you'll be able to slide it and then draw from here to here. All right, Lexi, step to this side. Let's take a look at yours, and I'll take your ruler just to double check. Make sure you're starting on the zero. It goes from the zero all the way to the two. Well done, Lexi, nice line. And smile if yours were correct on your, at your seats as well. Good. Now. Put your pencil in your pencil tray or slide it away. Put your scrap sheet of paper away for just a few moments. Look at who that now, Jackson, will you hit the lights? Look at place value. We talked about some digits and the houses that they live in and the value that those houses give us. So let's take a look at this chart. This chart shows us the digits that we've learned so far. We've learned about the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. And we've learned the one thousands. So let's say just those together, starting at the one I point to, the ones. Ready? Begin. Tens, tens hundreds, one thousands. Now pause. Today we're going to take a look at the next house, which is the ten thousand. Then we're going to go to the hundred thousand. So we'll say them all together. This time, let's start with the ones. Ready? Begin. Ones, one, tens, tens hundreds, hundreds, one thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Now notice, every group of three, we have a comma. So we do one, two, three, comma. Now we're going to take a look at a couple numbers. The first number that we're going to take a look at is the number 2,789. Now on this chart, you see these places aren't labeled. So we have to say them from memory. Let's see if we can say them from memory, starting with the ones without the labels. Ready? Begin. Ones, tens, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Good. Now we're going to need to remember that as we place this num these numbers in the houses. So if my number is 2,789, that has four digits. We're going to use all four places, ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. So as I place the nine, it goes into the ones house. The value it has is one, so it is the number nine. Now I'll place the eight in the tens house. If I were looking at just the eight, the value of eight would be 80. Now we will place the seven in the hundreds column. The value of seven is 700. Then place the two in the thousands. The value of just the two is 2,000. And there you in the house. So what digit is the house, or what house does the digit eight live in? Emily? One. Good, I love that answer. The two, what digit does that live in, Presley? Thousands. Exactly correct. Now, let's take a look at this number. As it appears, I want you to count carefully how many digits does this number have? How many digits is it, Madison? Four. Now, what is this number? Read it for me nice and loud, Yuna. Nine, nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Good. Every value is a nine. We have nine ones, ninety tens, nine hundreds and nine thousands. Now, what do you think the next number after this number would be, Jacob? 10,000. You are correct. But to place it in houses, I would need a little bit more to my chart. 
another house. So watch as I place it. I'll place the zero in the ones, zero in the tens, zero in the hundreds, zero in the thousands, and a one in the ten thousand. So here I have the number ten thousand. Now we're going to take a look at a couple things on the chalkboard so that we can continue looking at the value of each of these numbers. Let's read this first number for us. Now watch carefully because it goes all the way to the ten thousands. Read this number nice and loud for me. Carson? 15,206. Yes, do it one more time even louder. 15,206. Yes, how many digits does this have, Arthur? You're right. No, count again. Five. Yes, you got it. Five. The value of six is six ones. The value of the zero is zero tens. Two hundreds, five thousands, and one Five. ten thousand. Let's look at this number. How many digits does this number have, Anna? Five. Yes. What is this number? Read it nice and loud for me, Jackson. 67,328. Excellent job. Now, if I were looking at just the three, what house is just the three <coughs> in Una? Hundreds. Good. What about just the seven? Aiden. Tens. Not tens. You can look over to the chart if you need to. What house comes Ten after thousands. the hundreds? Ten thousands. House. Ten Not the ten thousands. In between the hundreds and the ten thousands is the? Yes, the thousands. Or the one thousands. And then the six would be in the ten thousands. Now let's look at this number. It's written out with each of the values. So I have 90,000 plus 5,000 plus 100 plus 50 plus 2. What number would that be, students watching? And give it to Jimmy. 95,100. That's 95,152. Yes, do you see how it is the same thing? I just took all of those values, combined them by their houses, and then I have the number 95,152. How many digits does this number have, Morgan? Five. Good. Which number is in the hundreds place, Gage? Yes, the one is in the hundreds place. Which number is in the ten thousands place, Cadence? Not one, ten thousands place. Five. Not five. Five is in the one thousands place. The next digit would be ten thousands. What is this number? Nine. So which number is in the ten thousands place, Cadence? Nine. Nine is correct. Now let's take a look at this next number. We have a nine in the ones place. We have a nine in the tens place. We have a nine in the hundreds place. We have a nine in the thousands place. We have a nine in the ten thousands place. What is this number, Emily? Nine thousand. Nine hundred. Yes. No. Now smile if you think you know. What is the next number, Dev? One hundred thousand. Yes, it is one hundred thousand. Watch as each of these digits are filled in, and then you see that we now go into the 100,000s place. So now let's look back at the chalkboard, and let's take a look at a couple even larger numbers. This number right here, let me fix one thing right here. This number right here, let's take a look at these digits. Count how many digits you see in this number. Adriana? Six. Yes, there are six digits. Read this number for me, nice and loud. Yuna? Six. Six hundred three. Th one way to remember okay. that is you can almost ignore these first three numbers and say the beginning three like you would normally say it, but when you get to a comma, you say the word thousand. So you can say 635,000. 
1,200. Let's look at this number. How many digits does this number have, Carson? Six. Read this number. The challenge is on. Jacob. 499,310. Yes, and I like how he said 499,310. Now, there was one small word I think that may have snuck in there. That was the word and. And tells us a decimal point, so let's <coughs> take that word out and try again for us, Jacob. 